Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to revisit this project again. Um, I thought I was done with it, but I think there are some more things that we can get out from this and to learn from this. So the main thing we want to look at now is the fact that, um, as you know from the other videos we've done, and if you haven't done those yet, do those first, <laughs> um, the enemy will kind of run up to us and then it will just kind of stand there staring at us. So what we want to do now is actually apply an animation that will um, trigger when it, he is sort of in a certain range or, or like, you know, up against us and then it will um, play an attack animation. So let's go through that process now. So what the first thing you need to do is, uh, open another window here, I have Mixamo open again. And of course we used this in the previous video. So you know kind of what you're doing now. What I've done here is just found a zombie attack animation. Um, he's attacking me with his like non-arm, but never mind. <laughs> That's just a coincidence of the model. Um, and obviously when you download it, make sure you download it without the skin because you know we've already got the model and everything in the game. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there because I've got mine already. You can go away. Right, then what we're going to do is I'm going to open up my actual zombie blueprint itself from before. So we've got all this stuff here. So remember this um, makes the enemy move towards us when it sees us. And we've got this here where when, when it's hit with a projectile, the zombie's health will be reduced. Um, when that zombie's health gets to uh, nothing, it will play the, the sort of dead animation. Okay, and destroy itself. But, you know, if we said, um, you know, well, actually, no, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Let's just do one thing at a time. So what we've also got is we've already got from before is this box collision, okay, which we used for the detection for when we shoot it, um, which is still a bit large, kind of easy mode, but that's fine <laughs> for now. So we're going to reuse that collision box. So what we're going to do, select the box here in the event graph, and we're going to add an event begin over that. Okay, now what this is going to do is obviously, you know, when this enemy is um, you know, near the character. So what we want to do is cast to the first person character. Okay, bring that back to there. So that will only be detected by the first person character. So when the character is in this box, yeah, so that basically means when the enemy is right next to us it's going to well as i was about to say we could put this one we used before play animation and it would play the attack animation but what would then happen is it would play that animation and then it would stop any other animations happening anymore okay so the only reason we used play animation here is because it's the last animation to be played and then it just gets destroyed afterwards okay anything where we have an animation that um, it's going to play and then it's going to sort of return back to um, you know running after us and continuing with other things again we can't use this play animation okay what we need to do is return to our animation blueprint so I'm going to open that one back up okay um, back to the state machine again so that's here where we're using the state machine okay I go into the state machine. Um, let me just delete that. I've already <laughs> was playing around with that earlier. Um, so you will have this, this that we had before, just this idle run, okay? Which is um, it's telling us when it can move between, um, you know, being idle and running towards us. And it was that was all based on speed, which we did before. If you can't remember how that worked, it might be worth reviewing those other videos and sort of reminding yourself of that process. But what we need now is another state, which is going to be, as you kind of had a preview there, um, an attack state. So add state and call it attack. Okay. Then we're going to just open this up. Um, and did I already import my attack animation? Don't think I did. Okay. So in this folder here, I'm going to add import, import to game. Um, my zombie attack animation, there it is. Import all, same as we did before. Now I have an attack animation. Come back here, and there it is, zombie attack. 
So I'm going to drag that into there. And this is the animation that will play. Um, let's go back along here. That's the animation that will play here. All right. Hopefully that's clear. Um, notice that we've got something new, and this is why really I wanted to, to show you this this video is because of this stuff is, is quite important. So what this is here is it is a transition rule. So it will tell um, you know the game when this rule happens, play this animation. Okay. So um, <clears throat> what we need is something that's going to tell us that the character has intersected with this box all right so what we need is a boolean okay so I'm going to go down to variables and this is in my um, animation blueprint and I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call it um, zombie range zombie range so is the zombie in range if I click compile it will give us some errors at first, that's fine. Um, I'll scroll down a bit here. You can see the default value of that is that it's not on, it's false. Okay, so it's off by default. It's not in range by default. Right, so if we come into our transition rule, okay, what we need to say is that this zombie range, so let's bring it in, get zombie range. And then we're going to drag out from here and we're going to type in boolean equal boolean and connect these together here and this should make some sense so i'm going to tick that box let's compile it so if this zombie range boolean is equal to on then the result can you can enter that transition Okay, let's go back again. So we said, yeah, when that's on, it can enter this transition. Now I'm going to drag this from here to here. And um, I'm actually going to copy this. So let's just copy that from there into here. Paste. There we are. It's exactly the same thing, but I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Compile that. So when it is not on, it can enter this transition. So we have these two directions. So when that zombie range, and you can see it there on the screen, zombie range is equal to true, it can enter the attack animation. When that zombie range is equal to false, it goes back to the normal, just running and doing its thing. Okay, so whereas what we did before with that play animation node, um, you know, that wouldn't be able to have this ability to return back okay that's why this has to happen in the state machine okay hopefully that makes some sense um so yeah we've got this boolean but we haven't got something to tell it to actually turn on and off so this is where i need to come back again to my normal blueprint this one here um so we said to interact with the first person character but now what we need to do is we also need to cast to the animation blueprint itself because that's where that variable is for that boolean that i just made so i'm going to drag from there and i'm going to go cast to uh what's it called um zombie zombie to animation blueprint that's what i called mine this is why it's so important when you're naming things that you remember what you actually name stuff. Um, and then from object, I'm going to go get anim instance. Yeah, get animation instance. And make sure you pick this one that's with the skeletal mesh. Because obviously, if you remember, we're using a skeletal mesh. All right, there we go. Zoom in a little bit. Cast my blueprint animation instance and what I now need to do is from here I can now access now that um, zombie range um, boolean that I made so I'm going to set zombie range okay and target goes back to there and this is going to set zombie range to true alrighty so let's just compile that make sure we get a tick yes we do 
So it's going to, when the first person character begins to overlap the enemy, it's going to cast the animation blueprint and it's going to turn that zombie range to true. In my animation blueprint then, it's going to say, OK, it's true now, so I can enter this attack transition and it will play the animation. OK, so this won't be com fully complete, but let's just test it for now. So if I push play, I can approach this guy over here, he'll run after me, he comes up to me and he starts attacking me. Great, attacking me, attacking me. When I walk away though, well, he's, he's stuck. <laughs> he's stuck in that animation and he'll just keep doing that forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, which isn't ideal. So let's escape out and come back to this again. So yeah, what we need to do now is very, very similar to what we've just done, except what I'm going to do is with my collision box, I'm going to add an event and it's this time it's going to be end overlap. All right, so then when we are no longer overlapping that box anymore, we need to essentially repeat all this. So I'm going to grab all that and copy it. Save me doing it all again. Paste it there. That to there. That to there. Just a copy of what we've done above, except this time it's going to then set it to off. Okay. Compile that. So when we begin overlapping, it's going to turn that Boolean to on. When we then end that um, overlap, you know, when we move away from it again, it's going to turn it to off. And of course, when it turns back to off, it's going back to the normal idle running. OK, so let's play it. Here we go. He's standing there. He runs after us. He's most close to us, so he's going to hit me and I'm going to try and run away again. Oh, can't see me anymore. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. We'll just keep on. Obviously, if I would need to tweak the um, his line of sight is not great. But there you go. You run after me. Hit me when I'm close, and then obviously run after me again. Let's try that again. Definitely some tweaks needed in terms of its line of sight and things, but there you go. He'll chase after me. Hit me, and then keep running after me again. This is perfect. And I can still shoot him, and he'll still die. Excellent. OK, so that's kind of that. Let's just do a quick, quick review. So in my animation blueprint, I went into the state machine and I added this new state called attack. All right. Um, in order to enter that um, animation, we have this Boolean. Um, so when that Boolean is on, it will attack. When it's off again, it will go back to normal. Okay, and then in my um, uh, blueprint itself, you can see that when we are hitting this collision box, it will set it to true. And when we end that, it will set it to false. Okay, hopefully that made some sense. Hopefully that works for you. Um, and yeah, um, see you again soon.